Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to part six already for my reaction series of Ahsoka. And of course, last week saw the return of Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker, of course, with Rosario Dawson's Ahsoka, taking us through live action Clone Wars flashbacks that just made for an absolutely religious experience in the world between worlds. And it was just absolutely so incredible to see the work of Dave Filoni, Matt Lanter, and Ashley Eckstein brought to live action like that after so many years and the Clone Wars influencing really my entire life in how much of an impact that it had on not just me and millions of Star Wars fans around the world. And of course, now we got to see some of the best parts of the series that we love so much in live action. And the behind the scenes that came out after with Dave Filoni, I mean, it's a shame that these big corporations are not willing to pay uh, those in the entertainment industry what they uh, deserve and so of course they're unable to talk about it themselves but uh, previously recorded footage at least afforded us a glimpse into obviously the special time that they had filming it last year that was such a gift to be able to share with you guys and I just wanted to talk about it really quick before we jet off into this new galaxy here tonight to see what the hell happened to Sabine of course on board the Eye of Scion Quite possibly the live-action debut of Lars Mikkelsen's Grand Admiral Thrawn, no doubt tonight. Will we see Ezra? I would certainly think so. I can't imagine Ezra's far. But now we're finally going to hopefully have the answers to some big questions that this era of Star Wars has been relying on. What the hell is Thrawn been up to? What has he been working on? What is this grand power he discovered out there? What is his plan? What are we doing for this movie that Dave Filoni's got coming up after this. This is where the big questions are finally going to have to be answered before we start really moving along with this chapter of the Star Wars saga. So, um, all right, guys, let's finally, after uh, five years in real life and 11 or 12 years in canon, uh, catch up with our blue guy, the heir to the Empire over here, and Ezra Bridger, now also going to be like, what, 31? So let's see what Imanis Fondi and Lars Mikkelsen have got for us. And I can't wait to see how the Soka develops into these last three episodes. Oh my god, the, the colorful hyperspace. That, we're traversing galaxies, dude. Wow, we've never seen that before. Oh my god. Wow. Well, I really have done it all. <laughs> I remember them from the stories you would tell us. She could have ended this. And no Ezra. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Ah, uh, that's such a cool connection. There was a great Jedi Master named Apparensis. <laughs> far, far away, I love that. Let us tell the tale of the great Yariel Poof. You promised me I would see Ezra again. Oh come on, man. I don't like I don't like them going back on Balin kind of being like honorable and and holding to his word. I, I hope they don't Dave doesn't go that route. I actually that's why I was interested in the nuance of the character. That is wild looking dude, those extra galactic jumps. I love the colors. We are in a new galaxy. That looks cool. That is Teridia, the ancient homeworld of my ancestors, the Dathomiri. The Jedi Archive spoke of this place. Oh, cool. The end of the migration route used by the Star Whales as they traversed the void. My people were among the first to harness and ride the creatures in the days before time was counted. The whales came here to die. Teridia was a graveyard. Oh. Oh, God. doing at the end of Rebels? Like, big, like, Pergil unalive pact? Dude, she and Hottie's just like, stab! Just lightsaber, stab! Not a Sabine fan. Shin, I mean, I, I am now. I wasn't before. <laughs> oh my god. You got people building giant statues even way the hell out here, huh? A long time ago in another galaxy far, far away, with uh, giant 
hook-like statues that are creepy as hell. Are those like legit Night Sisters? Yeah, they are! Nice! 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 Very cool! I wonder if they know all their uh, their sisters are dead in, in the other galaxy. You do our ancestors credit. Thank you, Great Mother. To you in the dream, your visions guided me across the stars. Is this Tolson? It reeks of Jedi. Oh, come on. It is dangerous. Where is Ezra? Where I, is he? I don't think he knows yet. She's probably about to go, like, run into him right now. Watch, he's gonna be in this prison cell. Not that easy. I watched everything I knew burn. The Jedi Temple? Fall of the Jedi. Rise of the Empire. It repeats again and again and again. No kidding, yeah. Born our alliance with Thrawn finally. Bring us into power. Not according to the sequel trilogy. What I seek is the beginning. So I may finally bring this cycle to an end. That's cool. The beginning is here. I need to know more about Balin Skull. I need Tales of the Jedi episodes. Now. Not two years from now. Damn, dude. So Ezra's been out here for like 11 or 12 years. That sucks. Like, he, this is not going to be the same guy. Watch, it's not going to be her doing it, it's Ezra. Or Thrawn's ship entering the atmosphere. New galactic threat. Yuzan Vong. Rakata. Chimera. Nice! Hello, Chimera. Cool, man. Wow, it looks messed up. Oh my god, it looks messed up. Wow. Oh, it's it's very messed up, dude. Oh, hello, budget, dude. Hello, budget. Where did all the stormtroopers come from, dude? Were there that many on the Chimera and the other Star Destroyers when it jumped? What the hell? Oh god, there he is, man. First, just a dream. Nice. Become a frightening reality for those who may oppose us. Great mothers, I salute you. Wow. Wow. We shall all escape this exile. This is Enoch, captain of my guard. He shall begin the cargo transfer as per my agreement with the great mothers. Then you must be General Balan Skull of the Jedi Order. The prisoner is Sabine Wren. Now well, there's a familiar name. <laughs> God, he looks so good! Wow! It's been a long time. Sabine Wren. Where's Ezra? Ah, uh, yes. How that singular focus will reshape our galaxy. Just answer the question. No need for hostility. You'll be stranded here forever. <laughs> it's also quite possible that your friend is dead. Oh, so he doesn't have them. I'm sure he's doing just fine. You've gambled the fate of your galaxy. On that belief. You wouldn't understand. What kind of ride you got around here? <laughs> oh my god. A high budget one, apparently. Got Nomad Sabine going, okay. Thrawn's gonna see those Pergil into the atmosphere. God damn it! More of them! Stranded forever my ass. Not when you got Ahsoka and Ezra with the Pergil. It, it is wild, man. Lars Mikkelsen as Thrawn. That's, it's just... Be warned. Wow. Nomad, die well. <laughs> I feel like yeah, at this point, Dave is either gonna hold Ezra until the end of this episode, 
end of the next one or just the finale. Actually, we're only halfway through this episode, so probably this one. Sabine Wren will have the opportunity of finding Ezra Bridger. You and your master will destroy them both. That's Grand Admiral Thrawn, dude. Holy shit. God, he looks so good. All those years of, is it gonna be Cumberbatch? Is it gonna be Cumberbatch? Nope. And then finally we got, it was Lars Mikkelsen, and it's like, yeah, dude, of course, man. Let's go. He's so perfect, and he's, he's so tall, man. Steady. Like, he just, God. Lars Mikkelsen, class act. So glad he was down for the blue makeup. Oh, shoot. She lost her ride quick. Man, these guys look like Kalish. I feel like I've heard that, that roar before. Where have I heard that before? Watch, Ezra joined in. He, he's one of them with like, uh, like the Tuscans and Boba Fett. Oh, poor guy's holding his eye. Like, what the hell, man? Ezra's gonna show up and be like, hey, those are my friends. Those are my guys. That's right, Sabine. You gotta use the force. Dave wants you to use the force. Man, the architecture of that fortress is so cool. I wanna know more about that, dude. Night Sister Fortress? Like, that's really cool. Okay, who, wh what's in the pods? Is that, are those like supplies, I guess? Good, prepare to attack squads. Should we not send more troops to support them? <laughs> I was gonna say. During this exile, our numbers have dwindled. So, no, two squads will suffice. It matters not whether Wren and Bridger are killed. The same can be said for your two mercenaries. Huh. You abandoned me! <laughs> He's like, f you, lady. Sorry he didn't just want to be the horse that gets shot. He's probably seen a few too many movies. This is funny. <laughs> Dave's gotta have a bit of fun, dude. I'm surprised he didn't just make it a wolf. Fine. I'll give you another chance, but you better not bail on me this time. Got it? Huh. Aww. I expect to be able to ride one of these in Jedi Fallen Order 3. Or Jedi Survivor 3, or Jedi whatever. So... You got something? What is the grand power that Thrawn found out here? Like, is are there the Grisks, the Rakata? Did he discover something unprecedented? Is it literally just we've been vibing out here in the Chimera ever since and now we're just going back? That's it? I, I really hope not. I mean, like, that's lame as hell. That's also really not a great setup for this big movie that Dave is doing. It's just, it's Thrawn! Again! And now he's uniting all the remnants. Oh, oh, okay. Cool, man. So it's it's Thrawn with even fewer allies than the Galactic Civil War. Okay. Like, is there anything else? Did he? Not. There better be something here. Are we missing something? Yeah, I, I feel like we are. No, that's alive. Yeah, I was gonna say. What the? What in the Meeper Gascon is that? What was that? Get up, come on, I can see you there. Little chum bucket mother Oh man. Plankton? Is that you? It's Turgle's brother from Jedi Survivor. Honest, Ravis! No, no, it won't hurt you. Okay, so Ezra's had some friends. That's fun. This is fun. Little snail bro. It's it's Gary the snail. Sorry I mistook you for Plankton. This is Gary forever, by the way. I don't, I don't care what its name is. This? Yeah, Ezra's got the same symbol. You like this? I, I eat a mojito, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> little, little snail crab mother <laughs> And their clams. Don't stay. Their little clam shells. <laughs> These are my guys. You must know Ezra Bridger. <laughs> These little guys are expensive looking too. 
All CG. Flicking his chops. He's like, which one do I get to eat? Richard? No. He's too young. I miss the idea of it. There was no future there. The hypocrisy. The the voluntary ignorance. Someone here? The dogma. Perhaps they flee a power greater than their own. What is it? It better be calls to me. Something stirs here. Can't you see it? I see bandits. <laughs> the enemy of our enemy is our friend. Until they start throwing spears at you. I, I am a fan of these turtle people. I I've decided to like call them all kinds of different names because I haven't settled on one yet. Oh, this is sick. Is this where Azra's been living? Little turtle village? Okay. Not bad. Could vibe in a with a turtle village for 12 years. Yeah, this is okay. Not bad. This th this could have been worse. He's doing all right. Living off the land with Gary the snail and all of his turtle people. They're snail turtle people. It's 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 it's, it's evolving. Let me know in the comments what we should be calling these guys. Look at the eyes on that little baby. Hello. Little tree frog looking ass. These guys are just a combo of like, they're, they're turtles, they're snails, they're crabs, they're frogs. All in one. Kind of reminds me of the Lerman village from the Clone Wars. Did you know I can, I can tie everything in my life back to the Clone Wars somehow? I wonder if Ezra ate one of these guys when he first got here. Is Ezra gonna like come out of this tent? How long are we drawing this out? I knew I could count on you. Okay, only <laughs> one more second. <laughs> Nice! Nice! Though, no. sure took you long enough. Does he have contacts? Well, you didn't exactly tell any of us where you were going. That's because I didn't know where I was going. Wow. Typical. Hey, it worked, didn't it? This is awesome. Didn't it? This is awesome. This is so much better live action! <laughs> Ezra Bridger, Amanis Fondi's Ezra Bridger. Oh, this is so cool. I love the costume. I love the vibes. I mean, Ezra Bridger Jesus. This is so good. <laughs> I see my friends found you. <laughs> yeah. You're riding a hound. How'd that happen? How did you find me? God, he sounds exactly like Ezra, too. Not right now. Sabine. Hey. Hmm? I just want to be happy that I found you. This is so cool. Sabine. This, this is really special. Thanks for coming. Wow. Can't wait to go home. He just stepped off of... Disney XD and that awful character model he was always given and, and just is now incredible. I didn't expect Iman to sound so much like him. Oh man, him and Mary Elizabeth Winstead rocking the contacts, dude. The thread of fate has spoken to us. A Jedi. They ride the travelers. But that is unwelcome news. Could it be the recently deceased of Sokotani? Death and resurrection are common deceptions played out by both Night Sister and Jedi. Balin assured me of her death. He was once a Jedi. <laughs> we must regard him. Then we kicked her off a cliff. We should. And we shall prepare her accordingly. Oh, man. We know her background, history, home world, her master, everything. If a star whale approaches, destroyed with prejudice. Huh. Of your dark magic. The thread of destiny demands it, Grand Admiral. Wow. Nice. 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 The Thread of Destiny.
Oh my god. I mean, you, you can call Dave's movie after this uh, either Heir to the Empire or Thread of Destiny. Then, then again, there was just an Indiana Jones movie of a very similar name and that didn't go so well. Um, Alright, so... Part 6 of Ahsoka. I was not bouncing off the walls this time. But I loved it. That was great. That was an incredible live-action debut for Lars Mikkelsen's Grand Admiral Thrawn. I just, I like to imagine everyone, you know, um, bore, you know, before me, right? People who grew up on the original trilogy and then were in that long, over, like, decade-plus drought where the books were all you had... I mean, I want to hear from those guys. What is it like, man? I was only a Thrawn fan as recently as, like, 2009. You know? What is it like to see Grand Admiral Thrawn, not just in animation, not just in Zahn's new canon books? I also want to hear from Zahn, man. Just how awesome is this? Lars Mikkelsen, a class act, bringing the character to life in live action. I, he looks incredible, he sounds incredible, the performance is incredible, it's perfectly consistent. I, I'm thrilled. I am thrilled. Uh, I'm wondering where Pelion is, I noticed just now we didn't see him. The Chimera was so cool, I love how beat down it looks, I love how all of Thrawn's ranks, they are really just, I mean, they look even worse than like Moff Gideon's initial, you know, Stormtroopers did in Mando Season 1 with all the different like robes, the ceremonial robes, the different armor mods. I mean, I'm really curious to know more. I was not expecting Night Sisters. I was not expecting real, living, breathing Night Sisters. I don't think that m the mother there was Talzin, but uh, that they are <laughs> live action Night Sisters, dude. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, man. Kind of want to know more about them. I will say, um, what I th there there are two things that I kind of like like and dislike about our journey into this new galaxy. Uh, one, I like that it feels so cold and dead and devoid of life. There's this sense of yes, we're in another galaxy, but there's nothing out here, right? It's it's not this this grand. You know, it's not Tantalor, where it's like maybe there's a okay-ish planet where you can live and potentially thrive. It's, it's just death. It's decay. And But there's also this life of the turtle people that Ezra has been living with. And I did say that I think, you know, we've been saying that Ezra's going to be a different person when we find him. And I think he, obviously he is, right? It's It's been 11, 10 or 11 years or whatever, and um, 11 or 12 years, and he's like 31 now. I think, and he has, I mean, lived an entirely different life with these people over all this time. But I'm I'm glad that he's been okay. I'm really glad that he wasn't just a hostage of Thrawn being pushed to the dark side or something. You know, I'm okay that Ezra's okay. And listen, man, I'm going to hold to it. I mean, sorry for the Rebels fans out there. I was not a fan. I, I, I think Taylor Gray and Tia Surkar are, are great people, no doubt, but I was never a fan of their portrayal of those characters. I was never a fan of how they looked. I was never a fan of the writing. I thought it was often cringeworthy, and, and I could barely stand it a lot of the time watching Rebels. Um, but yeah, they, they just, I thought Ezra and Sabine were always great in concept, but terrible in execution. Whereas here now in live action with Iman Fondi and Natasha Leo Bordizo, it's like, oh my God. I mean, I really got on board with Ezra at the end of the series, but then the series ended. And now this fully realized mature version of the character Played by an obvious talent in Iman Fondi and an obvious talent as we've seen in Natasha Leo Bordizo. It's like, I am so thrilled to finally be on board, to finally be a, a fan of these two, to finally watch them on the volume and enjoy the scene. It, it, it's so cool. It, that, that really, this has really met my expectations. I'm so thrilled that we finally got Ezra here in live action. Iman Fondi in his first scene already nailing the character. 
I mean, again, what I wasn't expecting was the voice. I mean, you can tell he studied Rebels before this shoot. I mean, like Hayden Christensen, nailing Matt Lanter's Anakin, Imanis Fondi is just perfectly already translating Taylor Gray's Ezra, uh, or the best parts of it that worked. And I'm just so thrilled, man. What I'm not so thrilled about and what I really am hoping they deliver on with Balin and Shin, especially because I really like Balin's perspective. I think it's really cool what Dave is setting up here. This cyclical nature of things. That these orders rise and fall. The orders of the light and the dark rise and fall every few decades and it keeps happening. Granted, there was about a thousand years there where the, the Sith were gone and, you know, you were dealing with things like the Nile, among others. And, and you know, so it, it does certainly vary. But he is right. History re history repeats itself. J.J. Abrams established that very firmly with the New Republic and especially the First Order. That we just, in 30 years, we go again. Fighting the Empire as a rebellion again. Flying the same X-Wings and TIE Fighters again. And so Dave obviously has to feed into that history repeating itself. I appreciate the effort. I really do. Um, but more so than that, I appreciate the effort of establishing Balin as this character of nuance that is looking not for the next thing but a beginning of something new. But I'm tired of the abstract. What is it? What are we doing? What is the point of all of these shows and this era in Star Wars? I mean, what is Thrawn just gonna come back with his dwindling forces and his broken ass chimera and 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 unite this these legions of broken ass Imperial remnants and and what challenge the New Republic? Yeah, Thrawn is a master tactician and and the greatest the Empire ever had beneath Palpatine and Vader. But what is he gonna do? They don't have the numbers anymore. They don't have the resources anymore. Luke Skywalker is out there now. Is Thrawn ready for him? Like, what are we doing? You know, where's this power that's going to give him a leg up? Where are the Grisks? Where are the Vong? Where are the Rakata? Where is perhaps a new technology, a new race that we haven't... What, is, what are we doing here? What is... And, and so I'm, I'm curious. You know, Dave still is not giving it to us. Uh, he gave us Thrawn and Ezra in one episode. He's already given us a lot here. Answering the questions of what it looked like on the other side of that jump at the end of Rebels. But I want to know more. I really want to know that Dave has thought of something big... Um, and, and something grand, right? I want to know if we're building up to the Infinity Gauntlet here, right? You know, what are we doing? I can't wait to find out, and I hope that Dave has, has that question answered for us. Um, but more so than anything, I cannot wait to see Ahsoka in her new white robes, perhaps with Ezra and Sabine going against... Man, that's... They would overwhelm Balin and Shin in hand-to-hand in -hand combat. So maybe it can be you throw in Morgan Elsbeth in there as well, some Night Sisters do a whole battle in the finale... That'd be so sick. Well, I hope the giant Pergil doesn't get shot down uh, and get murdered uh, when it completes its jump. But yeah, let me know what you thought down in the comments. I can't wait to see what the final two episodes of Ahsoka bring as they usher us into this new era of Star Wars that Dave Filoni is unfolding for us. You know, congratulations to him and everybody who worked on this project. It can, it was just clearly so freaking magical. And this episode had its own magic, despite being on a cold, dead, desolate world. So, you know, hey man, congratulations to all the, uh, the Rebels fans that really fell in love with the series and, and were with it every step of the way. I, I unfortunately never could be, I never was, and, and still cannot get on board, but I, I'm so thrilled for all of you guys, and, and I'm so happy uh, to be joining as, as a fan of Ezra and Sabine now, and um, yeah. I just hope we see Zeb. We need to see Zeb in these last two episodes as well. I keep forgetting to mention him, but his absence from the fighter squadron was bizarre. Uh, we definitely need to see Zeb as well. And I hope we do. And I hope to see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for, for joining in with me on this, on this eight episode journey. Um, I can't believe how fast we've already barreled through a lot of it, but I'll see you soon. So take care and may the force be with you. All right. Bye-bye.